evaporator coil to change out today on a little Duke reach-in refrigerator. We're gonna head out there first. We're gonna jump in here, get the old Kickstarter, and we'll get going, and then we'll get out there. Here at my job site, uh, we're gonna do the evaporator on this little guy here. Let's see what we got here. We got the Duke. RUF 48 um, 4.5 ounces R134A um, Let me see it's a ghost town in here Another dead shopping mall I used to um, There used to be a McDonald's right here It's gone I used to fix the pizza place that was there It's gone there was a Chinese restaurant that used to be right there where you see that. I used to service them. They're gone. There was another like Greek type restaurant thing that used to be right there. This was the food court. It's gone. That used to be the Dairy Queen right there. They had that whole corner. It's gone. So all that's left is the subway place I'm in and then one other restaurant around the corner right there. And that's it. It's gone. Empty. There used to be a play area in here for like the kids or whatever. Gone, 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 gone. All right, here's my veto bag. I filed a warranty claim on it. The zipper's hammered. Um, which is about, that's about the common thing with these. All right, there it is. Dirty fan blade, thermostat. Torn up leaky coil. That's what they do. So all the acid from the condiments gets in the air and eats the coils up. It's pretty much what happens. Uh, these ones are super, super basic to change out. So that's the one, the one good thing about this design. It's super easy. You got a couple screws holding your coil in. You got your suction line and then your cap tube coming in. Now on this one here, the customer buys their own parts. And of course, he didn't purchase another cap tube. So, probably have to do a back blow on the cap tube make sure it's in good shape. And we'll pull that fan blade off and give it a scrub. Got the factory dryer right here. And then looking at the condensate loop, we might as well replace that as well. <clears throat> you notice in the previous clip, this was just hanging there detached. They were just letting it drain from the drain line. And as you can see, the old condensate was plug o bug -o Almost like scaled up. So we'll just 86 that, get rid of it. I want to pull this pan out and clean this. Uh, if you've seen previous videos of mine, I like to get this these shined up a bit. And uh, I don't know if that nut's going to come off, but we'll probably be able to slide it under there and then get that to detach, you know, keep the, uh, the new one down. Um, also, if you look at this, I flipped it over. If you're never sure if it's time or not, if you pull them out and then take a look at the bottoms, you'll see they're pretty crusty and flaking off. And then if you just do the evaporator coil, this will be your next leak right here. And I guess technically it wouldn't be a recall, but if you're already here wrenching on it, might as well get her done. And I probably need to locate a thermostat on my truck for this too. The thermostat in there looks, it looks pretty old and crusty too. So we'll see if we can get this old girl up and running. The compressor is an O2 serial number. And you got some age on her to see if she can make, make her last for these guys. Yeah, 11602. There it is. Wow. Good old Dookie Duke. Curry for three. <laughs> if you guys don't ring your pipes out, that's how small your holes are going to be coming out of your copper. You gotta make sure you ream them out. 
Oh, you'll be choking, choking it off. Okay, got the pan cleaned out as good as I could get it for right now. I got the new condensate in, new liquid line dryer, and we'll get the coil in next. Basically going to be a rebuild on this thing almost, other than like a compressor change out. Take a piece of tubing like that for the condensate. Used to have that U to make a P-trap, then it would spill into there. I'm just going to do it like that. All right. I still got to wash out the condenser coil. And we'll do some vacuums. You can see here, I'm not the most disciplined in keeping my batteries charged up for the vacuum pump. No fault of Navax. It's just, you know, you're working, you get busy, the whole deal. Oil still looks good on this batch. We're good to go. See, that's pretty crusty. I got a freshie in there. Cleaned up the fan blade, cleaned out the drain pan. And we'll get that new coil installed. All right, new evaps in. New thermostat, clean the fan blade. New condensate loop, liquid line dryer. Did, the only thing that sucks, we did have to reuse the cap tube because the customer orders his own part, the evaporator for this. I did get to sell the thermostat and the other parts. Uh, he didn't get a cap tube for the system, but the cap tube was not blocked, so that's good. But that's about the only thing that'd be a bummer right there. Okay, I'm getting ready to pull a vacuum on my unit. I don't have the iPad here, so I'll do a screenshot of my iPhone timer. And it's gonna be real world. A little tiny unit that holds four ounces of gas for its total charge, cap tube fed. We know it's had uh, multiple gas and goes because it's had a leaky evaporator, and it's just real world stuff. We've replaced the evaporator, replaced the condensate loop, the liquid line dryer, and then we'll pull a vacuum and, and see how long it really takes in the real world to pull a little tiny system like this down with one Smurf boner. I'm not using two hoses, just one. Tiny little unit. I do have the micron gauge on the low side tap to the compressor, and I am pulling my vacuum through the high side, through the liquid line dryer, which will pull through the condenser, blah, 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 and let's see what happens. Timer started. I'm going to turn on the vacuum pump. All right, so we're like six minutes in, and we're at 2,200 and dropping. Again, this is real world. This isn't laboratory setting. Um, I've never been able to reach any of those times like you see in videos on the internet where it's a laboratory setting and you're pulling your microns way down in 10 minutes or whatever it is. Um, but I don't do a lot of installs with new equipment and new line sets. So if you're doing installs with new gear, you could probably expect some fast vacuum times. Um, real world. Again, this is a tiny little unit that only takes a charge of like 4.5 ounces. It's a two-door under-counter reach-in. Made by Duke Manufacturing. I got the one Smurf boner on here. Everything's tight. And we're probably seven or eight minutes in and I'm at 2,050 microns of dropping. And I know this was a dirty system because it had a leaky evaporator. So what happens when you have a leaky evaporator in this trade? Let's talk about it. You come out, you get the unit working again for your customer. So you do a gas and go. You order parts, or in this case, my customer ordered his own evaporator coil. Uh, and then you make your repair. So how long has this thing been gas and go before I came across it to actually have them order an evaporator? Nobody knows. The oil in that compressor is probably compromised. It's from 2002. It is POE oil. Um, and I think what I'm finding is when I do my vacuums on these units, this is what you're getting. It's trying to de dehumidify, you know, a dirty system. And you're not going to get fast vacuum times. It's just not going to happen. All right, I'm 
13 minutes in. Now I'm down to 1770. All right, that's where we ended up at. I noticed the head pressure on these little buggers usually runs a little high, but not too alarming. That's where we're coming out to, not bad. Total time on the vacuum ended up being about 59 minutes uh, total. Not bad. Isn't that the balls right there?